So I want to I want to bring us back a little bit. Um, you you started talking about yeah. MIT and yeah. Cold Fusion, and I know for a fact MIT has makes leaps and bounds on many different things. They are always ahead of the game. They were making touchscreen computers in the eighties. Um, and people were like, why, why would you do this? Well, who's going to want touchscreen anything? And then sure enough, everything's touchscreen now. And like, so I know MIT is really, I mean, they're making, um, they're, they're working on basically making replicators, like 3d printing biological materials, really cool stuff's coming out of MIT. So if you're telling me back in like the mid aughts that they were working on cold fusion, I mean, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if all of a sudden MIT comes out like, hey, cold fusion, uh, it's not a pseudoscience. What do you know about cold fusion? And, you know, what, what, is, uh, what, is, what is your, like, view? Like, what is cold fusion? Okay, so Break let's it down go for back us. to, so back to the 80s, there was a guy who, one, one guy who was working on cold fusion at MIT, and his name was Eugene Maloff. Okay. And um, there was a couple other people at MIT, I'm not sure their names, but they basically, when the, the Pons and Fleischmann stuff came out, they did a study on it. Then what I is that? that the, the what? The Pons and Fleischmann was the original, the original study. So they were the two award-winning electrochemists at the University um, of, uh, it's out in Salt Lake City. I think it was, um, what was the name? Uh, BYU. Okay. BYU, I think that's where they first discovered it. And um they had a press conference that said, you know, these were award-winning electrochemists. They were pretty sure of their work. They, they had studied this and they were saying they were getting extra heat out of this. And they, and they believed it was uh, cat uh, catalyzed fusion because they were forcing so much uh, um, deuterium atoms into um, the palladium lattice of this cathode. So that they basically, when you stuff all this, all these deuterium atoms in the, in the lattice, they're so tightly packed in the, in the crystal structure of this metal that they actually start fusing. Um, when you energize it and, uh, they were actually reporting it they thought they, so they thought, and so they had reported it because they wanted to, you know, show it, but they made a mistake of going to like a press conference rather than trying to publish it through the scientific literature and waiting, you know, years and years. But it's so, it's so like hard and tedious and the, and the methods for like, for doing that in science are so, and there's such a gauntlet of getting your stuff published. And there's so many people that are standing in the way. And then also the energy companies, um, there's, there's a lot of rumors about conspiracy theories. There always have been about like, uh, you know, energy inventions and new, uh, new energy inventions that anything that threatens the, um, oil companies or the, yep. you know, monopolies like gets destroyed or bought out. So I mean, energy scared. is, it's, it's the, the biggest it's like big money. money mover around the planet, right? Everything revolves Definitely. around energy. It's all energy. It's, it's all huge. about that. It's the biggest, like what's bigger than, than energy, maybe food, but energy is is required to bring food everywhere so it's all about the energy gas electricity so as soon as there's something free energy like they don't want to hear free energy you know right. they want to hear um i need to get paid like basically jp morgan shutting tesla down it's like well you know free energy in the air we can't charge people for it no 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 Sorry. So they had went public with it, and then what happened is MIT and Caltech kind of did their own, did their simultaneous studies on it and on both sides of the universe. And this was the 80s? So trying, in the 80s now? In the 80s to, okay. to, to debunk it. And um, there was some controversy around the MIT thing because they held, a, they held a party for the death of cold fusion, and they sent out advertisements for it, and it was before the data was even back from the lab experiments. So they basically, it, it shows Weird. the bias. Of like how they were so desperate and wanting they, they they debunked it and it was debunked in their mind before they had even looked at it and they didn't like do real they didn't do like it was bias in the science basically it shows yeah, yeah. and um and there's many could be potentially many reasons for that but um in any case um years later people are still researching it um the u.s navy uh nasa has reported now that they're they're finding positive results in these experiments cool. um so you can look up the, there was a recent NASA study that came out on cold fusion and it's like, don't be surprised if we're using in this on the space station and space shuttle in, in like five to 10 years. Um, it's so it's, it's no longer becoming a taboo subject, I think, because it's, we're gradually, I, I don't know. I think they, maybe they needed to make the, the rest of their money or something before they let the cat out of the bag. But for some reason now it's like, it's kind of like coming out of the bag. Um, yeah. and I don't know if, 
I like to think that I had some part in that because I, uh, of me posting that and drawing attention. I, I got a lot of people that were interested in cold fusion when I started covering that on my channel and started talking about it because it was kind of like this rogue, um, it's always been this rogue small field, even, even with the little attention that I brought to it with my small channel. And yeah. so it's, it's awesome that it's getting out to your huge audience now through your channel, man. That's, and, and through Tim, when I talked about it on, on, on uh, Timcast a couple of weeks ago. Just, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I mean, if this, if this, you know, NASA's interested in this because I, I think about space all the time. I, I, I always like to think, how are we going to move forward? And part of that is energy in space and propulsion in space. And I actually, I know you have some stuff about uh, future propulsions. I definitely want to, I want to hear yeah. what you have to say about that. Um, but on, on the energy factor, it's, it's exciting to hear that it's starting to, it, people are, companies are starting to realize space is going to be a thing. Actually, we're, we're kind of approaching, we got companies, orbital assembly working on, you know, a, con a space construction, basically a 3d printer for space stations. Like these things are, are, being made people are, are designing these things to build this stuff and it's one thing to build it but then it's another thing to power it when it it travels um so man cold fusion would be incredible and the fact that nasa is working on it's pretty cool um so but it, back to propulsion of course yeah we talk that's about, what i was about anti-gravity and propulsion right yeah yeah but, but you you need energy in order to have a you know a, build a craft with propulsion it's part of like how do you power the thing well you need energy Right. So you need your energy source. So it's it's almost like I've had a lot of people come into our conferences and be like, well, why are we even having this conversation? You should be working on the energy problem first, because once you have energy, you can do pretty much anything. You can build any kind of propulsion you want. Once you have an, a, an energy source that produces enough energy, you can pretty much, you know, do whatever you want. But you, the energy source is the bigger problem. But anyways, right. um, exactly. So it's, it is a two double. It's the other edge of the sword. So we're, we are. I, it's something that is in my focus and something that I am paying attention to and working on but um back to the whole thing we were talking about those conferences like the, they were the sds park conference and the state two conference and that's where mm -hmm. like basically i found all the a majority of the interesting papers and anti-gravity research at least the stuff over the last you know three to four decades you know the wow. stuff that's before that goes into a lot of other programs and, and companies a lot of it was just you know there was only a couple aerospace companies that were involved northrop grumman aerospace uh, Martin Marietta um, and the Avro car was another one that was working on it way back in the day. Um, they built the VZ nine Avro car and the Kawanda effect. They were researching. Those are like the U S air forces first flying saucer craft. Cool. Um, Bifel Brown, of course, there was a number of companies that he had uh, electrodyne. Um, what was it? Uh, something research midland research associates uh, i think um so there's a bunch of little companies um vero corporation um little things that you come across back in the day uh let me think um there was another guy named henry william wallace who had patented a bunch of patents on this so-called kinematic effect or what's called gravito mag uh, uh, gravito magnetism uh Cool. Like a, a, a magnetic component of the gra gravity gravity field that they thought they could use to manipulate um, gravity, and there was um, a whole bunch of inventions. And he, he was from uh, Valley Forge, PA, and uh, worked for General Electric Corporation and did a bunch of anti gravity research for GE. Um, so there's a whole bunch of the stuff we've put together, like in all in one place, just so people can find it all and research it. But then we said, oh, that's not enough to go and read about this stuff. You know, it's like, you know, anyone could write that, you know, it could have been made up for by, by counterintelligence to fool the Russians during the Cold War. It might not even right. be real. Right. So how do we know it's even real? So um, we got to this point where we're like, you know, we got to we got to start doing experiments on this stuff and actually building it and testing it, you know, because I, I, I met a couple guys out, you know, you meet. You come across all this UFO stuff, right? We someone right when we commented on Twitter, someone came back and was and, and posted a um, a documentary about secret space program and and some of these alleged whistleblowers that have come forward saying that they you know that they worked on a secret space program that flies active soldier missions to Mars and the Moon and all this stuff. And then there's the 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 Nazi Hannibal. So, I mean, we get some crazy people on my channel sometimes. When I'm we, sure. When we open it up and like just let them come in, and it's like. 
I'm like, wow, man, there's uh, there's some deep brainwashing going out there on the internet with some of this stuff, man. And, and it's oh, nice yeah. to like pull yourself out of the rabbit hole a little bit before you get like too, you know, like before it becomes a mental illness, you know, I'm surprised that I've lasted this long for after, you know, over a decade in the field um, sometimes, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> you have to stick with the science. You have to stick with verifiable evidence and facts. Real science. Otherwise it, yeah. Otherwise it's just a story. It's <laughs> what is science? What is real science? It's the scientific method and the scientific method is doing experiments. So it's yes. like, if you can't build this in the lab so that we, the whole debate was right me and this i don't believe in this necessarily i i think that according to all the physicists that i talk to and i want to have i'm starting to have more like phds and, and real scientists on the on the show and that's why i want to start a podcast specifically to talk to more scientists and get more scientists involved in the podcast there's no, we don't see enough scientists getting on podcasts and agreed and talking, you know what i mean and it needs to happen it's a bunch of people with opinions it's a bunch of opinions i mean that's I wanna, what i am you know yeah. but i i want to give people no. that that have the phds the platform you know that's that's i would love to to bring more people on to explain it to me 